Hello everybody. Welcome to our show. Our guest today is a multifaceted personality. He is an author, a golfer, a guitarist, a philanthropist, an entertainer, and all at the age of 12. Yes, you heard that right, at the age of 12. A sixth grader with Perry Middle School, this is Arnav Kopala from our own city, Dallas. Welcome, Arnav, to our show. Thank you so much for having me here. Sure, great. So, Arnav, your second book is out and it's published. It's all on the shelf. How do you feel about it? Are you nervous? Are you excited? Well, I feel so confident. My first book, Pentagon Springs, had such great reviews. And my, my second book, I have no nervousness. I just feel so confident about my second book. Great, that's wonderful, and we wish you all the best for it. I read some great reviews about your books. So um, what is your book, uh, Breaking Boundaries, all about? Uh, could you tell us something about the characters in the book? Yes. My book, my book, Breaking Boundaries, is about the journey that Jack and his friends go through. And as you can see by the name, it's just about what boundaries will they break through. And it's just like the journey and like the magic. And this book is about science fantasy, just magic, science fiction, all of that kind of stuff. And my love for particle physics is very shown in this book. I've been intrigued in particle physics and it's, um, I like to put the things I really like into this book. So it's, it's about, you know, uh, teleportation, some of those mysteries that scientists have always wanted to, you know, kind of find out. And it's, it's really, um, okay, I fumbled, I fumbled, sorry. It's okay, that's okay. <laughs> sorry. That's okay, that's okay. just okay. continue. Yeah. Um, so the question is? So are the characters about, uh, in your books, uh, how did you think oh, about so those characters? About the, do you want me to care, mm -hmm. care, mm -hmm. characters? Continue with too. that, yeah. Well, my second book is just about what boundaries will Jack and the gang break through. And let's say like it's like about like particle physics and just kind of the stuff you know some of the scientists just really like to know about and my love for particle physics is uh i hope clearly shown in this book and so let's talk a little bit about the characters um one of the main characters jack he has like a lively personality in fact he comes from a different dimension it's called calamine x and this dimension is also like a city and a dimension too so as he comes from this dimension, he travels from one dimension to another, and the other dimension is our dimension. And it's his experiences and challenges throughout school, and that's the introduction, and that's what my first book is about, introducing Jack into this whole new world, just like how I was introduced into this whole new book world. And Great the second thinking. book is, exactly, and the second book was about just how how his friends have been influenced about magic because as we all know everybody's is kind of intrigued about magic when we find something new it's it's almost surprising and very interesting and we'd like to know more about it so as jack's friends are also intertwined with the magic it's basically like what boundaries will they break through and this book is bigger and better and more intense than my first book. Great imagination and fantasy at the, uh, your age is generally, you know, around fairy tales, but you are actually exploring into scientific fiction and, and particle accelerator, which is really commendable, uh, Arnav. So uh, from Pentagon Springs and then Breaking Boundaries, how did you come up with these interesting names? I'm, I'm really curious because, uh, you know, did somebody help you with this or is it again creation of your own mind? Well, it's a creation of my own mm. mind. Uh, Pentagon Springs, uh, yeah, just like anything to do with DC and you know Pentagon. And in fact, five is my lucky number. So Pentagon is how I came up from the Pentagon Springs. And I just wanted to find a word that kind of flowed with Pentagon, something that was like a city name. So I just thought of Springs. And Pentagon Springs, it seemed nice to me, and that's how Pentagon Springs came. For breaking boundaries, the summary about the book or like the whole gist is like, what boundaries will they break through? 
And so I thought, what better name than Breaking Boundaries? Great, again, well thought through. So generally kids of your age are, you know, either writing poems, short stories, essays, but you have actually come up, uh, you know, with, with the book. Your first book was published when you were just 11. And I believe you started writing at the age of seven. Mm -hmm. So could you talk more about your interest in writing and how did your parents react when, when they first heard you that you're going to write a book? Well, my parents were surprised. In fact, I think they saw it coming because I started writing at the age of seven. And every day when I was seven, I used to have a composition notebook. And every day I would write a story, a fairy tale. I just write a story at least one page. And that was the foundation of my writing. And from there, I just started, you know, building up on my stories and my imagination increased thousandfold. And I got to the point where I was able to have enough ma imagination to compile it all into one book. And that was my first book, Pentagon Springs. Wonderful, a lot of imagination at that age, I must say. So did your parents uh, read the book? Uh, who read the book first when you wrote Pentagon Springs? Was it your mom, your dad? How did they react to it? Did they have any feedback on your book? That's a really good fact, uh, question. In fact, my parents didn't even read my book. As like any mom is, even though my mom is such an avid reader, she didn't want to judge my book and she didn't want to influence like the pristine thoughts in my head. And she wanted my imagination to be uninterrupted and just focusing on into these books. And I really, um, I, I really um, just appreciate uh, that she, she uh, encourages me. And just like that, even my dad too uh, does the same thing. And that's what really kept me striving really hard to write these books. Great, I think we as parents have some great tip here. Uh, that we should not force our kids with our own ideas, but let their ideas grow and, and let them grow creatively. That's great, and I think uh, we should really appreciate your parents for that. So my next question to you is then, who inspires you? Like, is it your mom, your dad, or anybody in the school? Who really inspires you to think through like this and you know come up with these great ideas? Well, I think my mind is the answer to that question. Um, Everything came from my mind, my imagination, and my parents were there to help me. And ever since I was seven, they started helping me build my writing um, ability. And so I could also say like my parents always, you know, were kind of like my inspiration. And they helped me build my own inspiration. So uh, all, my, all my imagination uh, was the basis, the foundation for these books. Without my imagination, none of these books would have been possible. Wonderful, that's, that's really great. So uh, apart from writing books and having these great creative ideas, I think you are into several other activities. You, you play golf, you play the guitar, and uh, you are also participating in several activities. And as an entertainer, you, you uh, MC a lot of shows. So how do you manage to balance all of this? I know that you are from a leap school, so there is a lot of academic pressure also. How do you balance this? Well, it was pretty tough, I have to say. In the first year, as I was going through, I was introduced into a whole new different world. And it was kind of surprising too, seeing what was there, how the process was. Everything was just so fascinating and especially new to me. And as humans are, we're always so curious to find out how everything works. And in doing so, it was pretty tough. However, after the success of my second book, things started to smooth out and somewhat normalize. My PR manager, uh, Mr. Brooks, he handles my public relations. Uh, my agent, Miss Vernon, she handles my commercials, magazines, and my on-screen appearances. Mm -hmm. uh, my editorial board, uh, consisting of Miss C and Miss Robinson, they're the ones who kind of help me in my book side of the world. And most of all, my parents are always there, especially my mom, who's there to coordinate everything and fit it into my schedule. Wonderful, that is a lot of work for a 12 year old, I must say. So um, my, my next question to is, 
to you is that uh, we, we have so many uh, activities that you mentioned about. You're so popular already. Uh, you have uh, attained president's uh, recognition for academic excellence, and you've been signing books uh, for uh, you know great personalities. With all of this, uh, how does it feel? You, and you have to be honest here, OK? How have your friends been so far? Uh, do you have any uh, pressure of, of being this celebrity kid and who's so popular these days? Has anything changed in terms of your relation with your friends? Well, it's kind of a little bit hard on my friends sometimes. There's like a little bit rough patches here and there. But otherwise, I just have like many friends who just like stick to me and they're just like encouraging me and just giving, just encouraging me to write more books. Okay, so thank you to our Nav's friends because having friends and having them uh, support all the time is equally important. So let's let's look at the other side of Arnav. I, I heard that uh, you love to watch movies with your uh, family. So what's the latest movie uh, that you watched? And do you watch Bollywood, Tollywood, or English movies? I do watch English movies. Um, some of them just are pretty cool. In fact, the the latest like Telugu movie I've seen is a Bahubali uh, conclusion. Yes, nobody wants to miss that, right? <laughs> yes, it is. Um, even though some people, some friends are saying, oh, it's pretty bad. But in my opinion, everybody should see that movie. Um, it was amazing. And in fact, all of that is also kind of an imagination too. And just how the way it's created and just like, it was so intriguing to me. And uh, how do I say this? Um, watching that movie has given me so many new ideas. and. That's probably the one and only movie I'll ever see. Wonderful. So talking about Bahubali, how about superheroes? Do you have any superhero that inspired you to write your books? Is Jack a creation of any superhero that inspired you? Yes. Like any author, probably the author is Superman. Their hero is probably Superman. For me, uh, the superhero I created, Jack and his friends, they're, they're my superheroes. And they're everything that I probably ever wanted them to be. They have magic powers, they're nice, and I think it's even cooler that they're all a figment of my imagination, and I brought them back to life. Great, so you actually gave life to your superhero. That's, that's wonderful. So uh, I also heard your mom say in one of the interviews that you know, for relaxation and for fun, you actually read chemistry books which is very, very unheard of of kids of your age. You know, I mean, I wouldn't do that. But uh, so what do you do for fun? Do you just read books? Or is there any other side of Arnav that we do not know and the audience would be interested to know? Yes. Uh, I usually watch TV sometimes. Uh, there are like a couple episodes here and there that I really like to watch. Uh, I, I love to like make slime. It's probably um, silly, but like a lot of my friends love making slime and I just think yes slime. I know that mm -hmm. I know that I have a middle a middle schooler too who makes slimes and I think they even exchange that with kids right so you are also into that mm -hmm. um I just think like slime is like cooking so like you know I, I even like cooking too just like slime is just really cool I mean just like the way it looks you know there's so many kinds of slime um I do origami I, I just like how you can just take a paper just like a post it note and turn it into something magnificent like I made like an icosahedron out of like 30 sheets of paper but you take 30 sheets of paper and you can make something you can make anything you want and that's just like your imagination you can it just like paper just is moldable just like you know imagination so I also do origami too uh, and sometimes I do crafts too for an example, uh, sometimes my mom, you know, she'll give me like small crafts here and there. Sometimes I go to Michael's and I buy stuff there and I make my own things because uh, buying things from stores, uh, it takes the fun out of it. So, and anything that's creative and fun, it's my thing to do. So I think uh, one word to use to uh, describe Arnav would be budding with creativity.
Okay, so since you want to continue to write about scientific fiction, your first book, Pentagon Sprints, and your second book also has been, are you planning to uh, write a third book? Are you planning to have a series? Yes, I do plan to have a series. Um, for the people who read my book, Pentagon, uh, Pentagon Springs and Breaking Boundaries, and especially in Breaking Boundaries, the cliffhanger I left, I don't want to leave them there forever. So I do plan to write a third book to move on ahead into the story. Great, so cliffhangers, hang in there for some more time till Arnav comes with his third book. Uh, great, so um, how about the illustrations in your book? Do you write them or does anybody help you? Do your parents help you write them? I did all the illustrations uh, in both Pentagon Springs and uh, Breaking Boundaries. Uh, I just usually, you know, just take some time off in my free time, in fact, and I just draw the pictures, um, shade them, do things like that, and then I just send them off to get them illustrated in the book. Great, so a full-on uh, author and uh, also into illustrations, great. Um, so let me ask you an interesting question, Arnav. Uh, I know that your character, ja uh, Jack, in, in, in this uh, book has some magical powers. So let's think that you get some magical powers for a day. What would you like to do? Well, that is a really uh, good question. Um, interesting one, though. In fact, if I had magical powers, I would probably think they would disappear. So I would probably just... I've, I've always, as as my you know fanatic for particle physics, I've always wanted to know: Can you teleport? Can you um, time travel back in time? And with magic, you can. And so, especially in this book, magic is like ma when magic and technology meet. So it's like a technology magic. So it's more like a futuristic kind of thing. So with this futuristic. Um, mind and the magic powers Jack has, if they were into me, um, then I would probably, you know, um, jot down notes or, you know, just make new friends on how does teleportation work, what do you need for teleportation, and how does time travel work, and, you know, what does time travel need to time travel, and that's what I would do for if I had magic just like Jack. Whoa, time traveling. Oh, that, that's going to be very interesting. I hope your third book uh, would cover some pieces of it. Uh, great. So uh, tell us some more interesting facts about you, type of food you like, what you like to do. Any, any interesting fact that you would want to talk to about uh, to our audience today? Mm -hmm. I am born on October 31st. That's right. It's Halloween. Ooh. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> But even though I was born on Halloween, I don't like chocolate. So I get all these abundances of chocolate and I don't know what to do with them. In fact, every time I, my birthday comes around, we travel to a different country. So one birthday we went to Ireland, another we went to Spain and Portugal, another one we went to Cancun, Mexico, and so on. So yeah. do you do so you have been visiting a lot of different countries and um, you know a interesting uh, culture mm -hmm. that you've been going through. Mm -hmm. So what about the food? Do you like? Uh, are you a foodie? Do you like to try different cuisines? Yeah. In fact, to we kind of do this because we like to explore the cultures. Like, what is Halloween and like in other places? Is it Halloween there? Or is it a completely different thing? So there's like a whole new something there. Like it's like. Even that to it, it adds to my imagination. So many myths and legends, like in Ireland, they're like Irish legends, and in Cancun, they're like Spanish legends and myths and things like that, like the Quetzalcoatl. And in I in in Ireland, there's like you know Saint Patrick, and there's so many cultures and different foods. And there's also the Hagies in Portugal, which was very interesting too, and especially India too. In fact, my favorite food leading from India, my favorite food is dosa and chutney uh, and idli too. It's just, um, it just really tastes really good and India is my um, heritage country. So that's one of the things I like. Great, that's, that's really good to know. I'm sure the audience would love to know more about you and uh, we will see you soon. So Arnav, 
I uh, read in your blog that uh, you want to become, uh, you know, your career aspiration is to be a particle physicist. So tell us more about this career. That's a very interesting career. How did you think about it? And when did you start uh, looking at it and start aspiring to be one? Well, it started all when I was in kindergarten. In fact, when I minute, the minute I heard the word atom, I was fascinated. Science has always fascinated me ever since I was small. And even to this day, it's one of my uh, best subjects. So I just really like particle physics. In fact, in fifth grade, we did a pursuit of passion. And pursuit of passion was we did we had to research on a career and what we, we would do if we were to grow up and what steps we would take. And aspiring to become a particle physicist was my almost my dream. So at that point, I was like, particle physics is the only thing I want. And as usual, sometimes the mind will change. So as I started progressing on, I started to grow a liking in politics and especially in acting too. So to this day, I'm still kind of debating between acting or um, particle physics or politics. They're all just so intriguing to me and I just really like those areas. But as of right now, I have a career as an author, a speaker, and a model. Wonderful, that, that is a lot of career again <laughs> for a 12 year old, I must say. So. Um, Again, I, I heard you talk about cooking some time back, so are you also into cooking? What do you cook? Well, I cook for my mom and dad sometimes, uh, tea and sometimes omelet too. Um, I watch cooking channels and sometimes they do like these weird things with the food and sometimes I try it too. And during lunch sometimes, I, for my free time, I cook with my mom as a like, great way of spending time together and sometimes um, I like to cook by myself too and find out what I can do. Again, I, I agree because cooking again is a great art and you need a lot of creativity also in terms of presentation, etc. So um, you spoke about so many different uh, careers that you are thinking about or you're juggling with so many uh, existing uh, careers right now. What do you look at yourself in the next five years? Do, do you um, plan what needs to be done? Do you look at your future right now? What do you think you'll be at uh, in, in the next five years? Well, I only plan one day ahead. I, I just think the universe conspires and just creates a path just for you. And I just wanna let the universe, um, sometimes the universe trying to conspire you and sometimes if you really want something the universe will most likely give it to you so I think whatever the universe whatever path uh, the universe gives to me I plan to follow it to the fullest potential wow that is a lot of philosophy for a 12 year old so you believe to uh, you know in going with the flow uh, as as whatever the universe has to offer and I'm sure you're going to get a lot of offers from the universe right and I'm sure the audience will agree with me. So um, do you want to share something interesting, any happy moments that you recently uh, experienced, Arnav, with our audience today? Yes, uh, one of the recent and most happiest moments was um, every, every ki a child, you know, uh, kind of dreams about when are they gonna work? How is it gonna be like when they work? And that day just like, you know, dawned upon me, in fact, Recently, I signed my Texas Workforce Commission papers, my W-2s, and my income tax papers. And I was just like, I was um, surprised, I was speechless, and I was actually, you know, earning money, and, and it was just like one of the most happiest moments I've ever had. Yeah, that is great. W-2 at this age is really, really commendable, and I'm sure I, I can imagine your happiness about that. So uh, I'm sure there are a lot of our uh, young audience who are watching us today. Uh, do you have any tips for them, Arnav? Uh, do you want to share some things with them that they should follow as if they are, uh, you know, aspiring to be authors like you? Yes. Um, one tip for any author that's out there is there are no boundaries in life. The only boundaries are set by your mind. You can do anything you want to do. If you think it, you can do it. Great message. That was a really a wonderful message from Arnav to all you kids 
who want to do something, not just be an author, but any, any career that you want to pursue. Wonderful. I am really amazed and awestruck with Arnav, and I hope the audience are too. So all the kids who are here uh, spending their summer vacation, we have two wonderful books for you, and you probably should be reading them and, and uh, explore the world that Arnav has. Uh, but uh, before I end this, I do have uh, one last question for you, Arnav. Is, um, both your books have been on scientific fiction. Are you also planning to uh, explore other uh, genres like you know, comedy, horror, or, or any other drama, any, anything like that? Mm -hmm. Well, I think like, you know, with comedy, drama, and all these kinds of, and horror too, like, there's like a, like a boundary. Like, you know, in comedy, you have to make someone laugh. In drama, you know, it's all you have to make them like some drama. And the more you have to make the person scared, and they're all just elements to that. You can't really, you know, have some funny moments in a horror movie. It's probably just only scary. And with that, like, science fiction is, you can do anything you want. In science fiction, you can have someone teleport from here to San Francisco. In science fiction, you can turn into a blob and disappear. You can do anything you want. Anything, maybe a, a three-year-old will tell you said something weird. If that three-year-old were to write that in a book and make it into science fiction, it doesn't really matter because in science fiction, you can do anything you want. The boundaries are limitless. Thank you, Arnab, and, and we wish you all the best for a great career. Whatever you decide to be, we wish you all the best. Thank you, audience. I hope you enjoyed this show as much as we did uh, having Arnav with us.